Hello everybody and welcome back to Blenderpedia uh, with today's tutorial on how to do some architectural modeling in Blender and we're gonna focus us on this building what I created uh, last week. It, this is not a very hard uh, or difficult building it's a rectangle square building with a hole in it um, and I put textures on it and did some little tricks with uh, glass plates on the wall with reflection and I figure out some cool tricks uh, to make that photo realistic, even when it is very basic. Um, and what I want to do in this tutorial is analyze this this thing, because if I'm gonna model every part, that takes uh, a lot of time. And if we analyze how I created uh, things like window frames or reflection in the wall or this street environment. Then you know the basics and you can make your own uh, yeah, your own building uh, and try to make that of course better than this one because this is not really the most uh, hard thing to, to create. Um, but yeah, analyzing. And before we start analyzing, I have two examples what I want to show you from a, a simple building and a nice one. So this is the simple building uh, and why I'm showing this to you is when you make a building maybe uh, you end up with this one or thing what looks like this and you think why is this not looking like uh, the building well, that looks so tuning and yeah, giving that that wow feeling and uh, that is all about the modeling and the texture and lighting and yeah other stuff and in this case the modeling is okay it's not really bad uh, the shapes are looking okay cool uh, but if you look at the textures, it looks, yeah, I think this is, there's just one tile texture and this is the same one, just with another color. There is no gloss shader. There is reflection, as you can see in the girl, but gloss is way more than only a reflection. So it's, it is transparent, it has absorption, so it, it's getting way deeper than just putting a gloss plate uh, and you can push that button gloss. So I want to analyze that stuff. Uh, yeah, and how to make your building and spend a little bit time on the environment around it. So this one is the basic one and the one I really like, what is pretty the same because we still have that blue color, is this one. And ignore that advertising in the middle from Alibaba. <laughs> I, I couldn't find another picture but it's looking pretty the same but done in a way better uh, way. Um, yeah, what I like is it, this is a white uh, plate, but it still looks pretty believable because there is some gloss in with some details and there's a lot of stuff going on in the modeling work and there is not a lot of textures, but it still looks with all the reflections from the sky and from the ground. It looks like the total image looks great. And if you think, what is it? It's just look like to the window and to these uh, balconies and the things that pops out. It's this, uh, yeah, it's giant and massive. Um, but if you know the basics, you can create this very easily and even better than that one because this is good, but it is not super great. Um, yeah, it's all about know your stuff, know the tools, and be a bit of creative, have a creative mind, of course. That's what we all need as a modeler. Anyway, uh, yeah, just let we just get started and uh, analyze stuff. Maybe I'm modeling some parts, uh, and then I show you how I did it, uh, but not a lot. And don't be afraid; you're not gonna miss that, really. Um, what is the best way to start? Yeah, the best way to start is just selecting the main frame, and that is this uh, cube. Uh, well, I started with a rectangle cube, and then I made holes in it. Uh, and creating holes is just you create uh, a cube, give the name like cutter, and then you make these yeah window frame sized uh, <laughs> things, and yeah you you put it in your building and cut it out with a boolean, and so you go to this one boolean and you select the difference and the name of your uh, cube, and there is a hole in the building. And it's the same for these giant uh, holes. Uh, you just make this one bigger, making your own uh, shape and cut things out. Even when it is rounded, you can make yeah, these holes in it. Just make your own version. 
I hope you know how to cut. Uh, I have other tutorials where I explain that. Uh, but yeah, we have this, uh, the basic uh, shape. What is of course, you're not going to start with window frames or reflections. You just need a, a basic model. And if we zoom in, you can see it's not uh, sharp edges. I, when I start with the cube, I put a modifier on it. It was the subdivision surface. I can show you very quickly. It was this one. So maybe if this was my base model, I always start first with the, this, this size and then I'm putting this subdivision surface on it. I uh, put it, yeah, make these round shapes. Do it exact, not like how I am doing, but I just want to show you uh, uh, that you have to do it in every side. Don't forget one. I need the one there, so it looks like uh, a dice or something. It's a dice is not straight at all, so that's pretty much it. But this is uh, not uh, <laughs> what I want to do. So if we do that, so we have holes in our cube and we have that main the base model we are ready to put the window frames in it uh sometimes you have to in, in this case i i think i started with the glass tiles on the wall and that was because i wanted to know where i had to put these windows in so that is a thing apart but uh, in most of the cases you just start window frames uh, and I wanted to create a square sized window and the fun thing is uh, Blender has an add-on If we go at you first have to activate it by user preference use system No add-ons and you to type in win and select it So it's activated and then we go to add mesh and window and we have it right there and we have some options right here uh, I think Normally when we start our blender, it's starting with three of them and make that one. Uh, and then we have some more. Yeah, you can count up wise. So like this, we just, we just want one window and we want square size. And now we have 100 and 200. So make that the same like this. But uh, what also can happen is that you think this is really thin. I want to make it uh, thicker. So the outer frame. Just increase that so this outer frame is, is growing and the inside is also growing. Uh, and you can remove, you make the inside a bit smaller by make that rise smaller. So it's pretty easy if you know how to do it. Uh, you have that inner frame, the black one, I just, I'm just ignoring it. Uh, and then we also have the sill, it's some marble plate, but I'm not going to use that uh, in this, this time. So now we have the, make it a bit thicker like this and then if we move it we lose the values over there most of the time yeah we lose it but it's no problem and then we go to our uh yeah or our model this is the one i created no and there are two ways of putting a window from frame in your building that you can do it just like this so it's popping out a bit oh you have to Make that exactly. Now there's no now. Now there's space. So try to make that exactly fitting, like this. All right. Then we go. So we zoom in a bit. So two ways. You can leave it, pop it out a bit. So and then it's going in, or just make this so we have a little corner right there. So there's shadow and and for me, I like this this way of uh, making window frames. But sometimes it happens and then you have to do it that you have to make it like this. It's not a big problem, but yeah, just figure it out. Uh, and in the image, you've seen uh, this way of uh, putting uh, window frames. And there was a little problem with the, with the window frame modifier. So I had this, this one and maybe I have to go to another layer because uh, when I move that, so I go to this layer, explain later on why, but uh, yeah, remove this, this from the previous version, add mesh window. So we have a window and maybe we make that 400, uh, 300, okay, make that 150, I guess. 
So we have a window prone and what I did, what, what, what's not really good, is double it. And then it's got thinner, thinner and I did not figure out why that was. It's not about the rises. Uh, so what I did was I just leave it into this one. Uh, look at your window frame if you don't want to have it like that square sized. Tweak it a bit. In this case, I want to have it a bit smaller. And then we are uh, yeah, just moving it a bit. So it's now we lose the values and I'm pressing Shift D and put them together. And Shift D and go on till you have eight or nine. In this case, it was I think around eight. And then we have all these window frames. One more thing to explain, and I'm not going really deep into it because it was not my uh, thing I discovered. I just copied it from the guy from the. Uh, Blender Diplom made a tutorial about gloss shaded. Uh, they made uh, a node setup where you make gloss, uh, make that uh, gloss absorption. And um, that's a very important thing. Because uh, we're now working on this window frame, I'm going to uh, explain you, but I cannot show you what, what happened. So maybe uh, I'm, I'm working with some other gloss material later on in this tutorial. I'll leave you what it is right now. Was uh, this is gloss? What what created from uh, normally? Guess I have not all these settings because I'm opening this tutorial. But normally, when you make a window fro frame, the materials are from the Blender internal, and you have to create your own gloss shader. So normally, what you do is you're selecting the gloss, uh, and then it's ta -da, you have gloss. But then you have to tweak it a bit to make that more realistic. What I explained in this uh, example. Uh, Gloss is not just gloss, you have to tweak that or you have to, when we watch this picture, it's not just uh, <laughs> that, that we have uh, a little reflection. You can watch a bit into the building, but it's also reflecting. That's all to do about absorption, but enough of it. Um, and yeah, you can tweak the, of course, these frames. If you want this, uh, this is the black, but this PVC is as white stuff. Uh, you can just add your own color or project a texture on it. In this case, I want just that gray black uh, color on it. And that works pretty fine. And what I also did is put some gloss on it. So when we go to this final image, uh, there's also a bit of reflection. So plastic is not really 100% a diffuse material, but experiment with it, giving your own values on it. Maybe you have, I think I've just used 0.1 or I have to watch it, yeah, point 0.1, but yeah, you can try point 0.2 to have more reflection on it. So enough of all of that, and we just keep going. And so we have these gloss, um, fit them exactly together, and putting that in number one. So we did that, rotating that exactly 90%. Uh, yeah, if I press, yeah, make that 90%, not 90, just like that. Because if I put now now 90, just one of them is selecting and then it's horrible. So these window frames, put them in. Uh, and I think in this case it was like that and we have some one window what is going uh, to that side, to the other side. And it was a problem because I wanted to create that, but it was no option in the window uh, add-on. So I did a little trick and I think I'm not proud of this trick, but yeah, I had to use it. Uh, I selected these, I'm pressing X and faces. So, and then I selected these and just extruding it that, oh, turn off O, because it will ruin your scene. And then we go to that size. But we have this really sharp, so. Selecting that one, the same for the top. And there we go. And then just put it right into it. So there you go. We have that square or that, that hook. Um, yeah, you know what to do. Just select that one and go into. It's not the hard part. Um, spend time on it and just don't do copy paste like I'm doing right now. I just want to show you how I put these window frames together. 
Um, but yeah, that was how I created this this glass wall. Uh, and this one I just uh, duplicated and rotated 90% and then that's it. Uh, for this window frame, that was pretty funny. Uh, I can do it with this one because you can see it's getting into the building, the glass. Let me zoom in. Uh, and I wanted to create that depth in the building. It was double sized glass and in the first time when I created this I just thought well maybe this is the, the glass so I selected it and I want to put it in the back and then still the glass was there and then I discovered there was another one what well, was pretty funny it was two pieces of glass so this is Adam's pretty going deep and it's like this and now we have a hole right there uh, what's not really good so try to put something there uh, what you can do is when you use the boolean just leave some concrete over there so I th oh in this case it's already done yeah so there's no hole try to put it right there and then you won't see it anymore there's no space and this is pretty good or size the glass a bit like you were you're extruding it or scale it like this there's no texture so you're not ruining it so this is how we create depth in the glass um, and then we have these glass plates on this building um, what I did in the base model I'm selecting it again or you can see it over here uh, the base one is made from concrete this was very easy image projection you're not gonna see it uh, anymore because it's hidden with all stuff on it uh, but sometimes when there's a little piece of <laughs> uh, empty space you can still see the concrete and I like that detail uh, what does that have to do with glass well there is some little empty spaces between it and if we can watch through it you can see concrete it's a little detail but it makes a difference so uh, that's pretty funny. It's like real. In, in normally, the base is from concrete and then people put stuff on it. Um, this is, uh, I put two objects here. So this is the glass one. Oh, yeah, yeah. So this is glass. And in the back, there's another one. And if I make that texture, you can see it's a very strange object. It's a ribble texture. And I thought by just putting uh, glass on the concrete, that gives an, um, a very weird looking, yeah, pretty cold, pretty weird. And then I put these ribbles in the back with a glass uh, in the foreground. And it looks pretty funny, but it looks pretty good. So two layers. And what is important with glass, and that's really, really important, so don't forget it. If we have these glass plates and the one back there, if I put them out, I have some little space between it and that is important because if you put it right there your glass will be black so don't do it leave some empty space there and um, these uh, scroops what I created it was just a circle and then I made this yeah I can zoom in a bit it's really easy uh, and if I selecting it and I go to the UV image editor I projected this screw on it and sometimes I rotated the, the object so it, there is some variation so you don't have to go well so you can see this is the concrete All right. then we have this this ribble this ribble thing and then we have the gloss so it's not just an, a projected image so only then we can uh, yeah make some uh, more detailed uh, wall <laughs> and in this case in this wall it was just uh, come back with this glass one moment I, I'm switching to this one because we're not talking about that if we take this this is just a flat if I can uh, I separate it because I wanted to put another image on it yeah, I didn't want any concrete uh, and if we go to the image editor it is just this image what I created by myself this texture so uh, that was pretty hard that there was when I duplicated were some black uh, edges everywhere so you could could see the duplication and I removed it and now it looks pretty believable I hope so you know maybe you can still some yeah, here you can see the duplication still so work on that so that's really important uh, but yeah here's nothing really a lot of stuff going on but here on this wall 
this wall there's a lot of stuff and try to do that in your own uh, uh, yeah, building yeah. try to do some fun stuff be creative and uh, not just projecting images on your on your stuff that's uh, that's not <laughs> that uh, how did you say that it's not going deep into anyway just go wild so oh yeah i should explain something about the class absorption so this was not my idea so uh, all the credits go to blender diplom uh, they did a really great job uh they made this note tree um and they you can go to maybe i should put a link to their website uh to this tutorial where they explain about absorption um it is all about how the light rays go into the gloss and do some stuff with it so it's not just uh, a transparent uh object there's a lot way more going on and that gives a really nice effect i can make a render but it takes a lot of time so that's, that's a pretty nasty that i can't show you but uh, it makes it way more believable even, uh, even with these reflections that feels really good so when you make a gloss shader, try to make that power, put this value. But well, yeah, just just if you want to go deep into it, I, I should link you to that tutorial. Really, really good stuff. Uh, what do we have more? Oh yeah, I've seen these little details. That is also important. Uh, creating it, yeah, just make a, a cross with the with a model and then extrude it. Uh, and how you do that across it's not really hard because just mesh cube and then you uh yeah you're making that like where you want it like this and then i put some extra lines two of them and bring them together oops and then i uh extruded it like this and then you have cross and now you have these whoa it's not really the same so make it thicker like this and yeah and as you can see it's it's now really sharp and i always always put that subdivision surface on it without your stuff just looks really dumb i don't know why it's uh it's the it's a the cg thing you see what happens if i make that smooth always nice 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 <laughs> you're thinking hey, you're a crazy guy oh, i am i'm really crazy but i just wanted to make cool stuff yeah maybe it spend some more time on it but yeah the result is there and there we go so yeah and then you go extruding it and Ta -da. oh yeah and i also put a material on it uh i can show you by just selecting that part uh if i go to the uv image editor uv uv image editor well you there you go uh this material it was from cg textures and i tweaked that a bit till it was in my uh so this was from cg textures uh but it was a lot of shadows hard shadows black and i didn't like that so i tweaked that a bit till it was like this and there were still some screws what we can use it was pretty good um yeah and then uh, I made small parts. Oh yeah, this is this is I think pretty funny. I go to sometimes I want to turn my camera and then that cross is not in the right direction and then I'm doing weird. So this is a cross, so we can go around. Yeah, and I make these. I didn't make just one straight thing because now <laughs> this is one of my things what i really like there are some uh leaps or holes or empty spaces between it and if we go to this end result you think well you can see it but you see it and that makes it looks like uh it has a function or it is not just there i can't explain exactly why but it's uh it does matter really it does um yeah and that's the same for this one if you i put this uh thing on the roof and it looks like yeah th that should be there <laughs> because if i removed it, it the integration with the, the the roof is pretty weird there is a glass and you think well if the rain is coming on it is now it is 
ended up well with some strange thing. And what is it? Yeah. Oh, if we select it, <laughs> I put in a, just that bluey's gray color on it. So there's no material and you won't see it in the end. And I see, I did not put a subdivision surface on it. So we, now we have these strange lines and yeah, you can see that in the end. So I'm not a big fan of it. And yeah, that you can do that way better. And I put, I think some more details on it. So I made these extra lines and then I put this a bit upwards. So we have some variation in it. So are you selecting this and then just putting it up a bit, not <laughs> just like that. It's a good while. Wow. So uh, I don't want to forget things to explain. So uh, I want to tell just one more thing about this building. I hope I explain everything well. I'm not skipping things. This fence was really fancy stuff. Ha ha ha. That's a nice joke. No, this was just a curve what I created. And I forgot to put a texture on it and you should do that, but just make it a bit gray or something like that. Uh, and then we have this uh, iron and I didn't have a plan for it. Same with the cross. I made an object. This is a sort for a triangle. And then, yeah, you can see it. I made that a subdivision surface. So it is smooth. I turn off all. But yeah, it's a very easy basic model, but yeah, I watched some pictures on the internet for fences and yeah, then, then I start modeling and I create this one. But uh, the reason I'm not modeling this is that I want you to make your own variation. I think you are unable to make your own stuff and that you have that inspiration to think and then you have your own original fans. Uh, the texture what I used for this one was, uh, I think this metal and how I UV mapped it. I think it was project from view. So I just see that that cross is over there now. Don't, don't like it. So I use it like this and I just did U project from view. And then we go to the UV image editor. We get this thing. I want us to have some groups in it, some shadow. And when we go to the final image, you can see it looks okay. But the problem in this one is, is these uh, railings, what is not textured. So this is the uh, curve things and they look really gray. This gray stuff, it looks believable. This does not. And that's because there's no texture on it. Um, so this is what's all about the building. So I explained something out in the base model. Uh, how to create holes in it, how to create these window frames in it. Maybe you think, yeah, this is not a square sized uh, window frame. Uh, how did you do that? That's maybe one important thing to explain to you. Uh, I created this window. Oh, it's behind this building. So I go to this layer, uh, add window. And I made that more flattened. So it's, uh, this is 300. I think it's the maximum. And that's, uh, I need to make 50. Oh no, make that 60, 70. 70 will do like this. Uh, but yeah, this, this is 300 is the max. And if this looks pretty big, you should size it by uh, hand. So if I put this to the first layer and I go to, uh, I have to rotate this uh, window. So the Z90 and yeah, selecting this over there. So I can explain how that works. So I had created these holes in the building and I put them right where I wanted them. Like this is okay like this and then we're selecting this stuff I put it over there and that's it that is pretty great just integrated in the building and we and I explained already how to uh, put the gloss uh, how to remove that gloss to put more depth in the building right yes we did okay um, yeah then about the street furniture 
the problem is with a lot of images what i can show you uh yeah people make the building and then they leave everything uh white or nothing and that's the worst thing what you can do because you can make an shooting building and just then put it on the ground with nothing and then all your eyes is sketching the ground and they they don't say oh beautiful building but they say yeah what well, looks so empty but the emptiness is what you just forgot is the space around you even this this blue texture is this oh it's awful it's not great and this guy did pretty well he didn't f focus on the cars but just put it in to have the feeling of what the size is so we can put some people in it so you can feel oh this building is pretty big but if you have a guy who's tall to this balcony you think oh it's a small building so this is one reason why you should put people or cars in your in your scene another one is uh, create a road, a uh, nice sky background, some trees, some nature. Just spend a little bit of time on it and your scene looks way better. Uh, yeah, this guy forgot to put something right there with my eyes catching this part. And yeah, that's, yeah, that's not good. Uh, anyway, still great picture. Um, so what I did to create this uh, I created the road. I created this, uh, yeah, this little street over there. Put some uh, tiles. My uh, company says so. This is the Blenderpedia headquarter. <laughs> it was a pretty funny idea, right? Um, so yeah, I'm I'm hiding the the empty spaces. So this brick wall is to hide the this part over there, and this sign is to uh, cover up the. Um, and now it's really raining really hard. This is a tropical storm in the Netherlands. I don't know what happened, but if you heard a strange sound, it's from the, that tropical storm, yeah. Anyway, um, and how I created that was pretty, pretty, not really hard. So the road was just this plane. I uh, made it a bit, yeah, so there's a curvy pattern in it. And I downloaded this picture from CG Textures, this asphalt texture. I tried to make it one by myself, but it was raining all the time, like it is now outside here. It's really bad weather. Um, so yeah, this is the... Oh, I should make another perspective. Uh, yeah, this is the, the street. Then I, uh, and then I created this one. It's, it is just a... a a cube and I made it flat and I put a modifier on it a subdivision surface and then I projected this image on it where is it this tiles so it is really easy I didn't spend a lot of time maybe 10 minutes 15 minutes then we have this stuff this is all individual bricks as you can see here so I'm put the, put I can show you the texture it's really uh, yeah so this one and um, yeah, I duplicated a couple of times. These ones, these are just square sized uh, yeah, tiles. And uh, I put some variation, variation in it just by turning some of them. And the texture I used is some funny part is, is this one, I had two of them. But then I discovered this black stuff there and I couldn't use this one. I only used that one. So there's just one texture for brick. Because this is black, you can see it's repeating and uh, yeah, try to avoid it. And yeah, this feels not really natural. But from this perspective, from this one, you won't see it from the top and then it looks believable. It's not the best I know, but you have got the ID. This sign, I'm not proud of it. It's just, just uh, yeah, I want to cover it. Uh, don't put ugly stuff in it because your eyes are immediately catching that and it's out of, people are not watching your, uh, your stuff. Um, there's a little bit more to explain in this scene and that is maybe a very important one. It's all about a reflection. So what I did was one sunlight, it's coming from the back and give that a value of seven. It's not really uh, uh, hard, fancy stuff. But the, the problem was to get these reflections, what you see here in the window and giving that that the cloudy feeling uh, weather. Um, so I tried a lot of stuff. I put uh, sky, I uh, saved this work because I don't trust Blender. It crashes now two times 
creating a tutorial, I was really frustrated. <laughs> Can you imagine you are talking 30 minutes and then Blender crashed and you have to start again because you don't have that, the stuff you want to have. Anyway, then I put a sky texture in it and get a value of one. And I go to this angle and I hit render. And we have to wait. Yeah, look, this is what happens sometimes. And it's crashing. Oh, I don't like that. It was good to save the work. Maybe that has a uh, reason. I don't know. Maybe I have to put it to the CPU again. Yeah, okay. So um, you can see the reflection is really boring. Or maybe you like it, but I, I just don't. <laughs> Because it's, uh, it's the same reflection in the window, it's it's on these tiles on the wall, and there is that blue color. It's a way of uh, make your render, but what I like is giving that photorealistic look, uh, to put an, uh, a panoramic photo around it and project that on the, on the building. And you can do that by... Uh, I have to watch... Yeah, I, I, do, I did some experiments experiments with image texture and environment and made some uh, these th spherical uh, images on these balls and it was still not looking really <laughs> what I wanted it and then I discovered a thing what I learned from somebody else and I don't know his name but what he did was was pretty pretty nice he created a, sil uh, a cylindrical image and put a panoramic images on it and I can show you and yeah, what if I can show you how how we how we, we are you doing that? It's creating a circle. What is important is uh, making that same size <laughs> and um, try to now it's kept and so remove the top face and face. We project an image, and what I did, I created a panoramic image uh, image. And this I think where are you this one I just get outside and created an image um, scaling it a bit so you and then cylindrical projection and you go to the UV image editor we don't want this in the background it's really bad um, selecting an object material oh 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 no environment just an image sorry for the confusion Sometimes I'm just selecting the wrong. Selecting my panoramic images. Image. Scaling that down. Uh, a bit more like this. So if we go to the texture, it should be okay. Now we have these ugly looking shapes. We make that smooth, it looks better. Uh, sometimes we have UV problems. And I don't think that's now it's right. So and then I made it a bit like this. So if we have this camera angle from like there, so we yeah, so just we don't have this this really sharp edge. Uh, so we have a nice camera looking. Uh, but yeah, this was the environment. I made it an emission and a value of one. So it's it's a light power run. Uh, and then I'm combining that, I'm surrounding it in the scene. And then we have when we hit render, and it takes some time. Wow, there's something going on. I don't know what it is, uh, but try to ignore it. <laughs> um, I think there is some purple stuff. I go back to this layer, the second layer. Oh, really nice. So it's not that one. So there's something in this scene what is giving this purple. That's strange. That's really strange. Maybe that's because Blender crashed or I don't know. No. But uh, to keep going, you can spend time on it why that is pretty weird. But uh, yeah, it shouldn't be in your scene. You're putting it right there and when we hit render it, it rendered at that background and that's not what I want I want my own background there so we have to do some stuff with layering um, if you put your panoramic picture in the second layer and then you go to this layer render and make a new one and call it sky back 
uh, and you only selecting the second layer and with the render layer you uh, you deselect the second layer and when you hit render you have the reflection in your scene but it will uh, remove the, the cylinder in your background and if we hit transparent we can fill in our own our own image and this is my note setup it's a really basic one I'm not going into that because <laughs> I explained that in another tutorial um, yeah I had this image it's really <laughs> different from a different location but yeah, I can like it uh, I put it in the scale so at the same render size and I combine it with a mix node so I selected my image and put that alpha value and select this one in the middle and we have a combination picture now it's not uh, displaying it because we have to make a render but I can guarantee you that it will mix pretty well so did I forgot some stuff I don't think so it's all about your own configuration uh, I'm not gonna give you all the values it is not that I say you have to discover it out but if I do you copying my values and uh, what I don't want is that you copying that because you need to be original and it's not really hard like the Sun what is shining I'm giving that a value of 7 but giving that a value of 4 is maybe giving this a different look what you may be more prefer than than the 7 value if I make it point 0.1 we have sharper shadows maybe you'll prefer that but I didn't do that in this one uh, and that's the same for the note tree what I did in this note tree I put some little bit missing it some, some color management just to the way I liked it uh, a bit of defocus a li just a little bit a little bit of lens distortion oh, sometimes I'm talking too much and there's nothing coming out of my mouth anyway and some art because you can see these notes are uh, all for myself to to exp to yeah to try to have that image what I wanted it so yeah you can put all these in but then try to make your own uh, variation it, it, that's just like what it is <laughs> anyway this sign on the road it's pretty easy you made it with a curve and then put these plates on it and project an image on it make it a bit glossy so it's not really diffused uh, and then we end up with this picture I think it's pretty much it yeah there is some sync here that's one of the details I always like you put in your uh, uh, in your scene this um, it is really small but uh, hiding it somewhere and it looks great um, there are, I don't know if I already said to make your window frames a bit glossy so select the material and put a gloss on it and you can experiment with the value don't make it too glossy because plastic uh, is not really reflective but if it's wet it's really reflective and sometimes it's more diffuse so try to give a value on it this wall is just a cube and we'll give some shapes on it uh, it's what what important is that you have the right textures so I had this one I made the shape and then I extruded it and same for this one uh, I'm gonna put it in all in a folder and uh, giving it to you uh, I don't yeah that's what I'm gonna do and you can download it below this video so you can try to make this building or make a totally different one maybe with way better shapes than I did and try to make it is not very hard to make it better uh, or uh, yeah it's, it's really simple to make a better one than this one because I created this really quick and fast and uh, if you spend some days on your own version you can make it tuning looking uh, I think it's pretty much it yeah uh, yeah these flag things it's just uh, a circle cylinder uh, what is white and the top is uh, I go square and I make that orange and it looks like a flag thing um, all right this is the end of the tutorial uh, I hope you liked it uh, as I said you can download all the textures they are for free because I made them by myself uh, visit my youtube channel so subscribe if you like and you can get more information same for my facebook there's a lot of cool extra information and uh, yeah it's cool to share that together all right uh, well see you later and I uh, hope you have some fun with this see ya